Seizures. Seizures happen when there are sudden and uncontrolled electrical signals in the brain. Electrical signals are controlled by neurotransmitters. Glutamate is the most common excitatory neurotransmitter, and gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Seizures can occur when there are too many excitatory neurotransmitters or too little inhibitory neurotransmitters. Seizures can be triggered by a variety of causes, such as trauma to the brain, meningitis, brain tumor, pregnancy, insomnia, stress, metabolic and electrolyte imbalance, especially hyponatremia. Drug overdose and alcohol withdrawal are all risk factors for having seizures. Let's go over some common medical terms associated with seizures. Seizure is a single occurrence while epilepsy refers to two or more unprovoked seizures greater than 24 hours apart. Aura is an unusual feeling or sensation that precedes a seizure. Some may experience an impending sense of doom, fear, or deja vu. But aura can have a variety of presentations, and not every seizure patient experiences it. Postictal means after seizure, and it begins when a seizure subsides and ends when the patient returns to baseline. It can last a few minutes to hours. Patients may have confusion, lethargy, headache, nausea, etc. Some may even have a temporary weakness or paralysis on one side of the body called Todd's paralysis. Types of seizures. There are two types of seizures, partial seizures and generalized seizures. Partial seizures are also called focal seizures, which are seizures that only involve one area of the brain. Manifestation of partial seizures varies depending on the area of the brain affected. Patients may have motor symptoms such as tonic seizure, which refers to tense and stiffening of muscles. A tonic is the opposite of tonic in which there is flaccid and sudden loss of muscle control. It is also referred to as drop seizures. Clonic is repeated and sustained jerking or twitching of muscles. And myoclonic is brief, shock-like muscle twitches that last less than one to two seconds. Patients may or may not be aware that they are having seizures during partial seizures. If they are aware of what's happening, it is called simple partial or partial seizure without impaired awareness. If there is altered or loss of consciousness, it is called complex partial or partial seizure with impaired awareness. Complex partial can become generalized seizures if it spreads to both sides of the brain. Generalized seizures involve both sides of the brain, so symptoms are usually bilateral. There are also two subtypes, tonic-clonic and absence seizures. Tonic-clonic is also called grand mal seizures. As the name suggests, it is a combination of tonic and clonic seizures, in which there is convulsive stiffening and jerking of muscles in the extremities and trunk with loss of consciousness. Muscle contraction can also affect other organs and lead to rolling of eyes, tongue biting, involuntary screaming due to air being forced past the vocal cords, pooling of secretions due to tightening of the throat muscles, and urinary and bowel incontinence. Patients usually have a postictal state after tonic-clonic seizures. Absence seizures or petite mal seizures cause a short period of blanking out, staring off into space, or daydreaming presentation. There is no loss of muscle tones and there is no postictal state. Seizures usually last briefly for one to three minutes. If a seizure lasts more than five minutes, or if the patient is having back-to-back -back seizures without returning of consciousness in between episodes, this is referred to as status epilepticus. Status epilepticus is a neurological emergency and requires immediate medical intervention. Nursing interventions. In the inpatient setting, Patients with a history of seizures or are at risk for having seizures such as a recent brain surgery are placed on seizure precautions. Seizure precautions include padding bed rails to prevent injury during seizures, making sure emergency supplies such oxygen, suction, and ambu bag are readily available for emergency situations, obtaining IV access, and supervising all out-of-the-bed activities. During seizures, stay with the patient and yell for help. Never leave the patient alone. Follow the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. The priority is making sure the patient is protecting his or her airway. Turn the patient to the left side with the neck slightly flexed. This will help drain any saliva from the mouth and prevent the tongue from falling backwards. 
place the patient on oxygen to prevent hypoxia that can occur during seizures, and hypoxia can also be the cause of seizures. Have the suction ready, but do not insert anything in the mouth during seizure. If the patient is clenching the teeth, do not force the mouth open with any object as this can cause severe damage. Loosen any clothing around the neck and ensure the airway is patent. Patient safety is also another priority during seizures. If the seizure happens while the patient is standing, assist to lay down on the floor. Place a pillow under the head to protect it from hitting on any hard surfaces. Do not restrain the patient and remove all items from the surrounding that can be hazardous. While you follow the ABCs and ensure patient safety, also note the time when the seizure started so that you know if it becomes a status epilepticus when it lasts longer than five minutes. Also note the characteristics of the seizure, such as the motor symptoms we talked about. How is the level of consciousness? Is it unilateral or bilateral? All of this information is helpful in distinguishing the types of seizures that are occurring. Anticipate possible orders for Ativan, which is the most common drug used to stop status epilepticus. You may also want to check the glucose level to rule out hypoglycemia, as it can cause seizures. After seizures, the patient may still be lethargic and confused. It is important to continue assessing airway, breathing, and circulation, and making sure the patient is safe. Assess for any headache, bowel, or bladder incontinence, mental status, and etc. Check vital signs and perform neuroassessment as ordered. I will go over pharmacological interventions for seizures in the next video. Thank you for watching.